Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first part of section 3.3, Optimization with Linear Programming. First, we're going to start off with a couple vocab words. The first one being linear programming, and linear programming is the process of finding the maximum or the minimum values of a function for a region defined by inequalities. So we did some of this yesterday, but we're going to get more into it with the lesson. Next vocab words is a feasible region which is the intersection of the graphs in a system of constraints and constraints being inequalities and we'll get more into the feasible region as we get into linear programming and then finally optimize which is to seek the optimal price or amount that is desired to minimize cost or maximize the profits so let's take a peek at and see what some of these problems look like. The first thing we're going to be asked to do is to graph a system of inequalities. So we're going to graph these three inequalities. First one we're going to start with is the red inequality, which is y is less than or equal to 4. So I want to go up where all my y values are 4. So I go up here, this y is 4, this y is 4, this y is 4. So now since I have all my y values being 4, I'm going to draw a solid red line through those dots. And why is it solid? Because of the equal to sign. If there is an equal sign or a line underneath the inequality, then we have to draw a line. Now, just like yesterday, we have to shade. And I like to pick point 0, 0. So I'm going to pick point 0 and plug 0 in for y. So is 0 less than 4? Yes, it is. So it's true. So I'm going to shade where it's true. I'm just going to draw arrows for right now. Now I can move on to the green guy where x is less than or equal to 5. So now I move to the x's where the x's are 5's. And I'm going to start putting points on my x is 5. So now I have my points. So I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to draw a solid line because x is less than or equal to. Now on that line, where am I going to shade? Again, I'm going to plug in 0, 0. See where I have to shade? Well, 0 is less than 5. So I'm going to shade where it's true. So I'm going to shade to the left. And now so far, I'm going to be shading in this general region, yes? Well, I still have one more inequality to graph. So let's move on to the blue guy. Here now, I want to put it in y equals mx plus b or slope intercept form. So I subtract the x over. So y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 2. Well, my y intercept is 2. My slope is negative 1, so I'm going to go down 1 over to the right 1 to create a negative slope. So I'm just going to keep putting points here so I know where to put my line, or you can go up to. Now you're going to connect those dots with a solid blue line because it's an equal to. So there is my line. And now again, I'm going to see which side I have to shade. So I'm going to just put 0, 0. I'm going to pick this point, 0, 0. 0 plus 0 is greater than or equal to 2. Is that true? No, it is not true. So it is false. I don't want to shade away from the false. So I'm going to shade this way. So where would I shade in this graph? Or on this, yes, on this graph, these inequalities. I'm going above the blue, below the red, to the left of the right, or to the left of the green. So I'm going to shade in this triangle region. All right, so you did the first part. And this first part we handled without a hitch yesterday. But now what else do we have to do? We have to name the coordinates of the vertices of the feasible region. Well, what's the feasible region? The feasible region is this shaded area right here. All right, so that's what the feasible region is. So now we have to name the coordinates. Well, here is an intersection, and this intersection is over 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 4. So that's coordinate point 5, 4. Then let's move over here, and this coordinate point here is negative 2, and we went up 4. And then this coordinate right here where they intersect, they went all the way over to 5, and they went down 3. So now we name the coordinates of the vertices. Now what's next? Now we're asked to find the maximum and minimum values of the given function for this region. So what do we have to do with that? 
Well, this purple equation is where we have to find our maximum and minimum values. And what do we do with that purple equation? Right? This is a big equation. Well, I'm going to take my vertices, the vertices that I just found, and plug them in to see what is a max and what is a minimum value. So now, my coordinates, I'm going to start with vertex, negative 2, 4. And so I'm just going to plug that into this guy right here. And I go 3 from here times negative 2 minus 2 times 4. That equals negative 14. Now I'm going to the next vertex. So I go 3 times 5 minus 2 times 4, which gives me 7. And moving on to my next vertex, I go 3 times 5 minus 2 times negative 3. And that's going to give me a positive 21. So now my max value, right? what is going to be my maximum value? My max is at vertex 5, negative 3, and that equals, what is my max? My max is 21. Well, what is my minimum coordinate? My minimum coordinate is negative 2, 4. So my minimum coordinate is negative 2, 4. And that gives me a value of negative 14. So I have my max and I have my minimum values. Let's try another one. Here now, we are asked to graph negative 8 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to negative 2. So what will this look like? Well, let's first graph negative 8. Well, if I look on my graph here, I can't go all the way down to negative 8. But can we make this go by 2? So let's make this go by 2s and see what that does for us. This is negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, and negative 8. So my y values, remember my y values have to be all negative 8. So I'm going to put points where all my y values are 8. So let's go ahead and connect those with a line. So I connect them with a solid line. And now which way do I want to shade from this line? I put in 0. Is negative 8 less than or equal to 0? Yes, it is. So it is true. So I'm going to shade up. And now I want to go the other side. I want to go y is less than or equal to negative 2. So I want all my y values to be negative 2. So I'm going to have a solid red line going on those dots. So now where am I going to shade from? This line. Well, I put 0 in. Is 0 less than or equal to negative 2? No, it's not. So it's false. So I'm going to shade down. Now going to the green inequality. Remember, it's just plus 0. So I'm going to start on my y-intercept is 0. I'm going to go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. Or you can go down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1. So now I'm going to connect those dots with a solid green line shading I go ahead and plug in 0 0 0 well it goes through 0 0 so I can't plug in 0 0 right so I'm going to pick a point above this coordinate point is 1 or 0 1 so I put in 0 for my x 1 in for my y so is 1 less than or equal to 0 it is not so I'm going to shade away from that point so I shade away now, I'm going to move on to the blue line. My slope, or my y-intercept is 10, so I go up 10. My slope is a negative 3, so I go down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1. Now I have to connect those dots, again, with a solid blue line because of the equal to. Now, which way am I going to shade here? Now I'm going to put in 0, 0, 0, and 0. So is 0 less than or equal to 10? It is, so that's true. So where am I going to shade? I'm shading below the green line, below the blue line, and I'm actually going to shade in this area in here. 
remember that we have to find the vertices. So I have a vertice here, a vertice here, a vertice here, and here. And so what are those vertices? Here are my vertices. What do I have to do with my vertices? I have to plug them in for x and y. So let's go ahead and plug them in for the x's and y's. So negative 2, negative 2. I have 5 times negative 2 plus 14 times negative 2. That gives me a negative 38. Then I have 5 times 4 plus 14 times negative 2 equals negative 8. Then, then I have 5 times a negative 8 plus 14 times negative 8, which gives me a negative 152. And then I have 5 times 6 plus 14 times negative 8. That gives me a negative 82. Please remember, we still need a minimum and maximum. Well, what's my max value? It is negative 8 at what coordinate point? It is at 4, negative 2, and that is a value at negative 8. What is my minimum value? My minimum value is negative 152. That is at negative 8, negative 8, and that gives me a value of negative 152. All right, let's try a couple more. Now, I already graphed a, them for you to save some time. If you don't believe me, you can double check. Now, look at how our graph, there is nothing closed up top. So what does that do for us? Again, we have to find our minimum and maximum value. Well, I already put in the coordinates here, which is 2, negative 4, and 4, negative 4, to see that they give me a value of negative 48 and negative 52. What we have to do, right, to see if we have a maximum or minimum, is pick a coordinate point that's kind of far away from these points. So I'm going to pick this guy up here, which is coordinate point 0, 05, that's kind of away from our vertices. So I'm going to plug them in for our equation, which is 2 times 0 plus 14 times 5, and that's going to give me a value of 70. So now, can we think a little bit about if I kept picking numbers that went off the screen up here, would this value keep growing? Yes, this value would keep going. So do we know what our max is or where our max is at? No, we don't, but do we have a minimum? Yes, we have a minimum. Our minimum is negative 52, and that is at 2, negative 4, and gives me a value of negative 52, but we do not have a maximum, and this would be an example of not being bounded, all right? This isn't bounded above, bounded below, but not bounded above because this can keep going on forever. It is called unbounded, all right? And that does it for section 3.3, .3, optimization with linear programming. Good day.